Cheers. Cheers. Drum brigade. Drum brigade. Brigade. <laughs> What's up, everyone? It's Corey Kingston here with Funky Fantastic. Hey. What was the other one? Phenomenal. Phenomenal. <laughs> Phil Pardell. Funky yes. Phil. Sweet. What's up, dude? You, yeah, that's what's up. Man. Dang. Drum Brigade show number four. <laughs> yes. Man, we're here in beautiful Oceanside, California. Mm-hmm. At Studio 528, home of the Drum Brigade good day man it is it's good day this is episode number four man this show is dedicated to john blackwell the late great john blackwell yeah man gone too soon this is not going to be a sad show though this is not going to be a sad show because that dude was amazing on drums i think he revolutionized like the scene played with prince i mean there's a lot of positive things yeah, to say about really, john blackwell can't really dude. top that gig Right? Like, so we'll get into that, man. This whole show is dedicated to him. Um, I got a lot of, like, not a lot of stories, but I somewhat knew him a little bit. Like, we weren't homies by any means, but, like, I knew him a little bit, you know? Talked to him, chatted with him. He's from Vista. That's where I live, you know? Or he lived, not he's not that. from Vista, but he lived in Vista. So we'll, we'll chat about that. Um, we have a nice show, all you know, all about Blackwell, John Blackwell. Of course, we have our catch-up. Classic. Yeah. We got the Drum Brigade question of the day. It's a bit of a heavy one, man. It's very, it's like very much about my life right now. So we'll get into that. Uh, drum drum uh, Brigade video of the week. is It'll be a John Blackwell video. And then uh, product review. We're going to review uh, an Ahead Armor Case by Revolution. That'll be cool, because I just got one. <laughs> I've never seen one before. Oh, man. I'm excited. I'm stoked. This is my second one, so we'll re review that one. It's great. Um, I mean, every week, man, there's always something that gets me going, dude. <laughs> so we got a freaking Corey Soapbox this week. It's not going to be a long one, man. Last week I had, yeah. like, a crazy long one. It was a good one. But that one needed to be long because everybody hates that grumpy sound, man, dude. It's true. So this one's not that bad. It's just a, it's just a normal soapbox. But you never know. Like, sometimes I'm like, oh, man, this isn't a bad one. And then I'm, like, an hour later and 15 <laughs> button presses later. <laughs> Um, so we'll get into that too. And then drum games, we got another name that groove. We got a special yes, prize. Sir. It's gonna be a great show, man. Yeah. So let's get into it. Yes. <laughs> How was your week? It was, man, I'm just glad to be drinking a nice beer right now. It's been a, it's been a, it's been a good week and it's been a bad week and it's been a up and down week and it's been a week. It's been a week. <laughs> it's been a week, man. That's it. That's it, man. I've just I've been really busy and like making some changes and uh, you know just just kind of getting through the week, man. I haven't ridden my bike. That's probably the main problem. I've been too busy to ride my bike, man. I've been taking on some extra work, like drumming and teaching and like doing camps it's like camp season and yeah. like so i've just i haven't had any time and i i feel like i feel it like i feel like i need to get on my bike and unwind and clear my mind and get some positive energy and i i don't nice. know man like yeah. if you ride bikes you know what i'm talking about but i don't even have a bike anymore <laughs> i sold my bike man it's such a big part of like my program i miss you know? it i wish i didn't sell it yeah i it's necessity for me. It's like drumming. It's like I, I have to ride my bike. It's part of my weekly routine, and it just keeps me level-headed. But I haven't done it like this whole week. And last week, 
I've been too busy. So, um, what about you, dude? Did you play any good gigs or anything? Well, a lot of well, yeah, it was fun. It was a good week, you know, just yeah. usual. Played a few gigs, a recording session. We did this weird. It was super fun, like a live recording session where we just recorded. Everything was mic'd up. We had video cameras, and we just uh, played for like an hour. Yeah. Just like recorded a bunch of stuff live, and uh, I feel like it's kind of rare these days, at least for, for me. Like I don't really get enough of that. Just like full band, just like set up mics and everybody play music. Yeah, it's like it's organic, fun. right? Yeah. Yeah, dude. I love that. Like, most of the reggae sessions I've done, like, you know, I've, I've done a, quite a few reggae sessions. That's, like, my, my forte or whatever, my specialty or whatever you want to call it. But most of them are done like that, where it's, like, I've done some where it's, like, one or two or a couple mics in the middle of the room, and we hit record, and that's awesome. it's like they used to do it, you know? Or, like, every, every re- reggae record I've done has been live. Like, there's never been, like, okay, well, let's lay down the drums, and then let's lay down the organ or whatever. It's, like, everything is live. Go yeah. for it. Hit record and do it. And um, that's how they used to do it, man. Like, you know, back in, in the 60s and the 70s in Jamaica, man, it was never, like, okay, you're in an isolated booth, and let's play a click track, and, you know, let's just, just hit record and go. <laughs> it's, like, and it, and that's when I think the magic really happens, man. It's really cool. It's really cool. I'm sure that was a dope session. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Good players. Got to tune my drums up different, you know? Like, Your vessel drums? Yes, my vessel <laughs> drums. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tune them up all like, all, it was kind of like a jazzy vibe, so I got nice. to tune them all, you know, How'd they sound? tighter. So good, dude. <laughs> you know, like, of course. They're just like... Yeah, yeah, it's phenomenal. It's kind of <laughs> I love it. I'm so yeah. glad. I'm still so stoked that you got those drums and you're like loving them even more now. Amazing. That's <laughs> that's how I feel, dude. That's how I feel about my drums. Like, like I didn't really have to get used to them because I like designed them, you know, like or I didn't. I yeah envisioned them. They just you know? ima- like they're just perfect. Yeah, right? you it's get them, the you're sizes. Like, yeah. It's it's like. And it's like now when I play them, it's just like, yeah, they're my drums and they're like perfect. (laughs) Perfect. Yes. (laughs) Um, Did you get any new gear? Did I get any new gear? Well, I didn't really talk about my my gigs. Well, yeah, tell me about your gigs. My gigs were not that great. All right, did you get any new gear? (laughs) (laughs) That's it, really? No, I just, I haven't, my gigs were cool, but they were just random like normal gigs like i played at like a a restaurant i played at a casino actually (laughs) my gig yes yesterday what was what's today tuesday normally we record on monday but yesterday i had a gig so i was on a gig yesterday Uh playing at paula casino dude you guys are gonna learn today okay i have i have some stomach issues i'm not afraid to say it it's a condition all right it's a condition okay Okay. i'm not this isn't a soapbox moment this is just me being real okay like i have a little condition called ibs all right okay so i've gotten it under control i'm a vegetarian now i've been great for like five years or so but every now and then man you have those flare-ups and man they get you going. Well, yesterday, the middle of my gig, it was actually the last set. I ate like a veggie burger for dinner. <sighs> it didn't go very well, Phil. From the casino? From the casino. Oh, they know, feed you at I the casino. Those. Yeah, I've had that one. And um, it didn't go well. Didn't go well. So I'm playing, and I'm like, yeah, my stomach's a little weird. This is the second one of the day, too, by the way. Like Second I, veggie burger? No, second flare-up, oh. IBS flare-up of the day. <laughs> I went. I, I was at. I was at my teaching gig, and it was the same thing. Where I was just like, all of a sudden, it just came on. It, it's like that's the thing with IBS, man. Is like, I'm not trying to get too graphic with you guys, dude. But like, sometimes it happens, dude. When it comes on, it comes on, and it's extremely painful. The only way out, dude, is just to get it out in the bathroom, bro. Take care of it. Huh? <laughs> well, 
it's only happened like maybe one or two other times where I've been on a gig in the middle of a set. For some reason, it always happens like at the beginning of the set where we just took a break and we're like two songs in oh, no. way too early to take another break. And that was what happened yesterday. I'm playing and I'm like, oh man, my stomach hurts so bad right now. And then it got to where like my hands are sweating, like I can barely hold on to my sticks because oh, I'm no. like, I'm cold sweats. And I'm like, I can make it, like I can make it through this set. Like let's just mind over matter. Like let's, you know, I get like real deep on myself. Like I'm in control of my stomach. Like we'll just mind over matter this thing. And, dude, I have so many stories like this, dude. But, like, uh, this one was, like, <clears throat> I'm I'm also subbing for this band. So I'm not in this band. So I don't really know these guys. Like, I've worked with them maybe once or twice or a few of them, you know, more times than the others. But, yeah. like, I definitely don't know the singer. Like, I know the bass player and keyboard player from somewhat playing with them before. I know the guitar player. I work with him a little bit, but not – I don't know these guys like that. Yeah. And so I'm like, dude, we're like two songs in and it's like I'm going to keel over and be holding my stomach and just oh, be God. like crying or I'm going to go to the bathroom. But either way, something's got to happen. I can't keep playing drums. I can't. That's I can't. I'm I'm in severe pain right now. I'm sweating. I, I'm on the verge of crying. Like I'm emotional. I'm like. I can't play. I can't concentrate. My hands are sweating. I'm just like, oh man. I'm in so much pain, dude. And I just, so I go, I tell the guitar player, I'm like, hey man, come here, come here. And he comes from the other stage, like, what's up? And we get, we, da na na na, da, okay, yeah. Hey, how's you guys, how you guys doing? And I'm like, hey man, do you know how to play drums? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he's like, I, I mean, kind of, like, what do, you, what do you mean? And I'm like, I'm actually being serious. Do you know how to play drums at all? Like, can you just hold down a beat? And he's like, y yeah, I mean, I can. I think I can hold a beat together. And I'm like, all right, man, look, like, I'm being, I'm being straight up with you. I'm like, I have irritable bowel syndrome, dude. And I'm like, I'm having a flare up right now. I'm in so much pain. Like, I just need like five minutes. Like, can you just cover the song? And he's like, Okay, yeah, I got you, man. I got like he could see the seriousness in my eyes. <laughs> oh, like man. this is do or die, dude. And so like, yeah, I I'm like, "Thanks, man." And the band's looking like, "What's what's what's this dude doing? He's just a sub. Like, why is he walking away?" I'm like, "Hey guys, I'm really sorry. I'll explain in a minute. I'll just I'll be back." And like, yeah, I jammed to the bathroom, dude, and like that's all I could say, man. Dang. And then like it's still like with IBS, man, it's like Dude, I'm getting personal, but it's like, so you handle your business in the bathroom and it's no fun. And, but at least you got that freaking demon out of you, you uh -huh. know, <laughs> but then like, it's still, that's not all of it, man. It's like, it yeah. still hurts. You're still uncomfortable. Like you want, you feel gross. You just want to like hold your stomach and like cry a little bit, you know, and like lay down. You don't, you don't want to play drums. Definitely not. And so I, I just go back to the stage and I'm just like, Hey, thanks a lot, man. Thank you. I'm like, I, you know, I, I'll explain to you guys after this is just, this is me, dude. Like I, this is, this is real. Like I'm, and I'm not like the most open person about that department, you know, but dude, when you, when you gotta go, you gotta go, dude. When you have That's stuff like that, up. it gets real. That sounds like a rough gig, man. And like, this is the thing it's like this is a normal this is normal life for, for me now it's like I got it really under control but this was like an everyday thing for me before like five or six years ago every time I would eat I would go through this you know and um, now it's gotten under control where it's very rare but when it happens it's like oh my gosh like I know how to handle it now like I know I have to put the embarrassment aside and just be like guys look I can't help it like I, the only way around this is just going to the bathroom, you know, like, yeah. and like, so, but yeah, the whole rest of the set, man, I was just like, I was just like wanting to keel over. Like my stomach hurts so bad. And, um, I felt like I might need to take another break. You know, like I was almost like I was, it was crossing my mind. Like, 
do I have to call the guitar player over again for another song? And do I need to run to the bathroom again? And I was just like, no, man, like, I'm, I'm the boss of my stomach. Like, I'm in control. Like, you're not going to do this. Just, you know, it's going to go away. Just tough it out. Be strong, you know, and that's what happened. So I made it through the gig. And, you know, it's like, you just have to laugh about it, dude. You just yeah. have to laugh about it. You just have to kind of be like, I know, man, it sucks. You know, it's, it's like I have this thing where it happens sometimes. And I, I explained to the singer, she's like, what's it, what happened? Are you okay? And I said, no, I said, I'm, I'm really sorry. I go, and I'm sorry to be like, to let you know, like let you into my personal life. But I'm like, I have irritable bowel syndrome and I'm like, and I had a flare up in the middle of our set and there's just, I was in severe pain and there's nothing I can do about it. Like I don't have anything I can take in my stick bag. I used to carry stuff in my stick bag, but I'm like, I just, Unfortunately, I had to run to the bathroom. <laughs> Good so, thing guitars could play drums. Thank goodness, man. Like there was, I mean, there's hope. I mean, I, either that or it's like, can you guys just play something without drums? But I've had to do that before. I've had it on tour where we're like in the middle of America and the next gas station is like 20 miles away. And I've just straight up, like I've straight up ma- mind over mattered that where it was like, this needs to happen right now. Like I'm literally looking at bridges. Like, can I make it happen under that bridge? There's no bushes. We're in the desert. And I'm like, there's no, there's no protection. There's no bush. There's no nothing. Like, Oh my gosh. And so I'm just like, dude, I don't know what to do. Man. It sucks. But like, I've, I've just like meditated, you know, like I've sat there and just, I remember like one time specifically we were, I was playing the agri lights and we were opening for social distortion we were driving like through Arizona or something across America. And we went to a gas station, got some snacks, did my thing. This is before I knew I had IBS. And I just, we we got on the road. We're like 10 miles away from the gas station and like 40 miles to the next gas station. And um, it hit me like a ton of bricks, dude. Like immediately. And I'm like, guys, like I'm, I get like, I get, I mean, everybody's been there, but like, it's like, I get panicky. I get like, guys, 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 like I get like that. Like, like I turn into a baby because it's so painful. And, um, I had to like, I put on like mellow music. I don't remember what it was. It was like Sade or something. (laughs) And like, like, listen to like mellow music. (laughs) And I'm just sitting, I was literally sitting in the, like the bench on the van, like, like sitting like this and just completely like meditating and just like smooth operating dude just mellowing out and trying to mellow my stomach and the guys are like behind me like making fart noises and like <laughs> like trying to like antagonize me and i'm just dude i'm just i'm a freaking like i'm a zen machine dude i'm just blocking it out and i'm just like fully like centered and like totally like and fully like toughed it out and mind over mattered it and made it to like the next gas station and it was good but like it's no fun dude no fun i've had to do that a couple times where i'm like we're two songs in and i'm like guys hey it's break time they're like we just took a break and i'm like it's break time right now i'm sorry i'll explain in a minute it's break time and i'll just like dip out dude i don't know Thankfully, it hasn't happened on any, like, big gigs, like, or, like, you know, crucial gigs where it's, you know, you, you have to, you have, you can't do that, like, yeah, but hopefully that never happens. Normally, normally my adrenaline is rushing quick enough that I don't have a flare up or normally I know it's coming. Like, I won't eat something borderline (laughs) hamburgers, like even a veggie burger is a bit borderline. Really? Like, yeah, that's for sure borderline for me where it could go either way. So that was my gig. That was like my big gig highlight of the week. Like, it's a terrible highlight. Man, <laughs> it's very that's personal. Awful, you guys dude. know a little bit about me now. <laughs> <laughs> there you but go. it is what it is, man. It's like you can't, you just got to live with it. That's that's what it is. That's that's another reason why cycling is a big part of my my program. It helps with that. That's why being a vegetarian is a big part of my program because it helps with that. Um, so, like, my whole life is like that. Like, 
being a drummer, like being a husband and maintaining my irritable bowel syndrome, like everything it revolves around that. Huh. It sucks, but it's whatever. It is what it is. I live with it. So yeah, dude, like I had something pretty substantial happen this week. It's a bit heavy, man. It's a bit heavy. It leads to our question of the day. Drum Brigade question of the day is, have you ever quit a band? Mm. And my answer to that is yes, I have. Uh, yeah. What happened? So this week, man, I called it quits on Sharp Shock. Yeah. <laughs> no heavy. longer, no longer in heavy. Sharp Shock. No longer in Sharp Shock. They the are band looking was doing pretty drummer. good. It was doing okay. great, man. It was doing great. It had nothing to do with that. It had yeah. nothing to do with Davey and Dan. Those dudes are freaking stand-up guys. They're great. They're great musicians. Davey's one of the best songwriters I've ever worked with, man, ever. With with I worked with him in Suedehead and Sharp Shock, and I was a big fan of his old band, Beat Union. Um, you know, but it had nothing to do with that. It was no nothing personal with them. Nothing personal, like it wasn't their decision. They didn't kick me out. Nothing like that. It it was a hundred percent my decision. Uh, it just needed to happen. Like I just, I just, uh, there was a lot of personal issues that I had. Um, not with them, but just I think with the band in general. Like my moral issues and my integrity as a musician and as a person. And so I wanted to maintain that. And I feel like the only way I can be true to myself and maintain my integrity and be the musician that I think I am or I want to be, I think it's time to bounce. Hmm. <laughs> so I did, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm still very, it's very new. This happened yesterday. So we've been talking about it for a while. I don't know. Um, I was unsure about it for for a good month or two um and we played a few other shows and they were great and i was just like you know i'm the kind of guy that like if i can just be the drummer like if i can jump into a gig but i don't have to be saying something with that gig you know i don't have to be like taking a political stance or i don't have to be changing who i am you know, like I'll jump into a band and be part of that band, no problem. But if I have to compromise like my beliefs or my integrity, I'm not into that. I'm not into that. I don't play music for that. I don't play music for that. So I, this band was kind of going that direction and I'm trying to jump out before it it's too deep. And so that's what I did. It's uh sucks because the band was really doing well and it was really fun to play with them i really liked it i had a great time playing with them um so grateful for the shows that we played so stoked on the stuff that we did but you guys did some cool shows what was the yeah. what was the best one you guys did um the dream car shows were really great really yeah. cool like hanging out with like tony canal from no doubt and those were great, but um, I think the best one for me was we opened for Descendants at, um, uh, where did we play with them? Um, someplace in LA, I, f I forget. Um, I can't remember it. But anyways, it's a huge show. It's only our second show ever. I was super nervous. And it was at the Palladium. 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 It was sold out at the Palladium. And That's it was awesome. just like, I was, I was nervous, man. But we like... We killed it, dude. We we killed it. Like, I, you know, we we really like. We got some really great opportunities as a new band. I think that band's only played ten shows. That's crazy. And everyone has been great, man. They've opened for Descendants and opened for Rise Against and Ooh. Dream Car and like. So yeah, man. It's not it's not an issue of like that. It's just an an issue of like. You know, everything that you do kind of comes with a price and um you know there's some big opportunities that they have that are you know would be kind of life-changing for me in a negative way and um whether that's like the tours that they have in the future 
it would be like actually impossible for me to go on this tour, you know, financially. Um, and then, like I said, like some of the moral issues would be like a real compromise for me and who I am and who I've like, you know, um, who I like to, uh, not project myself as, but maybe, yeah, like present myself as, um, I was just, I just felt like I was compromising too much to where I was like 80% in this band, not a hundred percent. I don't think that's fair to them. And I don't think that's fair to me. I want to be true to myself and do what I want. And I want them to be able to do that as well without somebody restricting them. So I bounced. (laughs) Sounds like the right thing to do. Yeah, I think it's the right thing to do, man. And the, the hardest thing for me is like, well, you know, if they do have success down the road, am I going to be able to be like, yeah, this was my decision and I'm happy for them. You know, because I, I want success in music. I want I want success. You know, I want to I want to reap the benefits of what we've done. You know, and um, it's I I have to be okay with it. It's my decision, man. Yeah. I didn't I didn't put it on them. Like I, I wanted them to make the decision for me, but at the end of the day, it's my decision. And so there's no hard feelings. We 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 ended it on really good terms. You know, and I try to make that very clear that there's no bitterness towards you guys. Um, I just want to do my thing and move on. So I did. I did. And it's it's cool. Uh, I think I'll be all right. (laughs) I've quit bands before, man. I've quit. I've quit big opportunities before. And it always worked out. I, I feel like it's worked out in my favor. And there was like some periods of time that were rough, but it worked out. So I'm here now and I'm working still as a full-time drummer. So what can you say? Sounds successful to me, man. Yeah. I yeah. think I think it'll be all right. I think it'll be all right. It's like right now it's like breaking up with your girlfriend. You're like, "Oh man, did I did I make the right decision? Like I I kind of miss her. You know, she was hot." <laughs> <laughs> and you know, but you have to move on. And then like the next girl that comes around, you're like, man, but she's like really hot. You know, I'm so glad I got rid of her. So that's, I'm not saying that I'm going to get a better gig. I hope I do, but I just hope I get a better gig that fits me and my personality and my lifestyle and my, the person I am. Yeah. Well, better gig is kind of subjective, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's it it wasn't had nothing to do with the music and it had nothing to do with those dudes as musicians or or artists i have nothing but respect for those guys i think really highly of those dudes and so much so that i would play in a band for a year and a half and you know not have have very many benefits but um so no hard feelings and nothing no negativity it's all we ended on a positive note and now they're they're kind of relieved that they can move on and there's nothing like lingering like is Corey gonna stay is he gonna go it's just like yeah I think I'm gonna go and you guys keep doing what you're doing and it's been great so nice have you ever had to quit a band whoo yeah I'd say so yeah Yeah. nothing super crazy or anything I mean uh, like after I lived in Philadelphia for a while and I was I had a bunch of different bands I was playing with on a regular basis. And then, uh, you know, life changes, all sorts of things happen, and opportunities arise elsewhere, and um, ended up moving out back out to San Diego area. So pretty much had to... You had to bounce on all of them. Bounce on all the bands I was in. They were all, you know, they were all bummed and stuff, but, you know, it was... Yeah, there's no hard feelings or anything. It was yeah. just kind of one of those things. Had to. It was a decision that had to be made. Right. Everyone, yeah. Everyone was cool about it. I've never had to quit for those reasons. Like, I've never had to quit because I'm moving out of state or out of the country. Yeah. That would be a lot easier for me, I think. But that, that decision to be like, hey, I'm not going to be around anymore. I mean, that's honestly what keeps me in California. Because the thought of trying to find other work in another city is like so scary to me. <laughs> yeah, start like starting over. Starting over, yeah. Network of 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, but um, I've quit. I've quit for other reasons. Like, I quit. I walked away from Agrolites when it was like at the top. They were at the peak of their like careers. Like, Ooh. it was really the ball was really rolling when I quit. It was. It wasn't at the beginning like Sharp Shock where there's no real money being you know like considered or. I mean, like, it was like we were hiring lawyers and stuff to talk about. It, it got ugly with AgriLights. It got uh, ugly. And, um, you know, I, yeah, there was, there was money that I didn't get, and we just put it aside, and we're cordial now. We're, very, we're cool. We're cool. Like, I'm cool with all the original members of the AgriLights. And would I ever go back to play with them? Definitely not. No, not a chance. If it was the original lineup and there was a lot of money involved, then yeah. But <laughs> no. No. Like, Dang. now, if Sharp Shot called me for a gig and was like, hey, we really can't find anybody and it's it's this, like, I would be like, 100%. Like, no, like, I wouldn't even think twice. Of course I would do it. Yeah. Do I want to be in that band, though? Uh, nah, I don't think so. It's not a fit for me anymore. Yeah, being so. a committed member to a band is it's a big commitment, right? Yeah, man. I, I just want to do a lot more. Like, I want to do more with Drum Brigade. And like, I want to do more with teaching. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I, I want to I want to do more as me being a drummer, not me being in a band. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, th that's all personal stuff. But like, I don't want I don't want a band to be saying who I am. Like, I don't mind being in a band like I like that, but I don't want a band. I don't want whoever those guys are like and not just Davey and Dan I'm talking about like any band that you're in I don't want those guys to like because you're in a band I don't want that to be like well because those guys are this then he must be that yeah. that's not who I am dude I mean like I like to just be the drummer and you can figure out who I am later yeah you know like you know, I don't. I don't want to be making a statement in a band. I'm too old for that. <laughs> I'm too old for that. I'm too old Danny to be Glover. taking. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I'm too old to be taking a a political stance in a band, or too old to be making a statement in a band. I just. It's about being an artist and being music musical, and people might have different opinions, but that's just who I am, man. Like, you know, that's just what it is, and. I'm not going to let anybody make those decisions for me or make those statements for me. It's just not going to happen. So now, now if I jump into a gig, you know, who, who, who knows what, like, but if I get hired on a gig and I'm Corey, the drummer and this band has like a thing, but I, a, a thing that they're saying or whatever, or a story and I'm just jumping in as the drummer, that's different. You know, like I'm, I'm okay with that. Cause then I could just still be like, well, yeah, I'm just the drummer. Like I, you know, I don't care what those dudes believe in or what they stand for. I'm just playing drums for them. Mm -hmm. But this band, we started from the very beginning, you know, and I don't know. It's just, it's getting, it's getting too serious. It's not, it's not about Corey, the artist or Corey, the drummer anymore. It's about Corey, the drummer from Sharp Shock. It's not for me anymore. Yeah. So, but I've quit other bands too when I was little, like little, when I was younger, like <laughs> for stupid reasons, like getting on my soapbox and being like, being like, they'd like piss me off about something like super, like I was in a blues <laughs> band when I was like 15 and these guys were all middle aged and I was like the kid or 16, like I was playing in their band and, uh, they would, I was like, dude, I was into like Primus and like into Dennis Chambers and stuff. And so... I would like I was like a blues gig and I would set up like double bass and like <laughs> no. and I wouldn't do I wouldn't get crazy with it but like on endings dun, 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 then I'd be like you know like whatever I could do whatever I could fit in and they would be like you know they would like harp on me dude like you know what man your snare doesn't have to be so tight you know you can loosen it have you ever thought about getting like a deep snare and like dude this was like in like not the 90s like 99 or something it's like that wasn't cool to have a deep, like, loose snare then. Like, you had to have, like, a piccolo, like, 311 sounding snare, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, I remember one time they were like, you know, you don't have to, like, have such a 
deep. I mean, it's such a like tight sounding snare. You know, a lot of the drumming in blues is really simple. You know, you don't have to do like like extravagant fills. And I started getting pissed off, dude. I just start. I just got up box, and started like, taking cymbals off and like putting them in my bag. And they're like, "What's the problem, man? You don't have to leave." And I'm just like. I'm done, man. Like, put my symbols in, started done. packing stuff up, dude, and just straight, like, left. Like, threw Dang. my stuff in the car. I'm like, you know what, man? You guys don't like the way I play. You need to just find another drummer. And they're like, Corey, you know, you don't have to take things so personal, man. It's just constructive criticism. And I'm just like, I don't care, man. I just put my stuff in and <laughs> took off, dude. And <laughs> they never called me again, dude. They got some girl that was, like, terrible on drums, dude. She was awful. But she had a loose snare, and she didn't do any fills. Probably didn't have two bass drums. She did have two bass drums, dude. <laughs> and she just played, like, shuffles, like, all day. da 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 and, like, perfect. That's all they wanted. Yeah. And so It worked out. I'm like, I was so mad, dude. I was like so mad because I was like, I, I worked so hard to be in your band and I, I take every gig that you give me and I'm at every rehearsal and then you're just going to like nitpick on stupid stuff, you know? And, and so I was just like, whatever, man. And, but same thing, dude, like another gig came along and I just, you know, I was like, I don't need to play with these fools. And those dudes are still doing the same thing. They're still playing the same bars and the same guys and like... And so, you know, it's like, I mean, I still haven't gone back to play with them. I'm still waiting for a call, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but like, <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is, man. Like, another gig came along, and, you know, I just feel like, like I was telling somebody today, like, you know, he was another younger drummer was talking to me about quitting his band, and he just doesn't feel like he's artistically on the same page as the other band they're about they're about being rock stars and he's a typical drummer he's like level-headed and like thinking about it very rationally and like very like from an artist's perspective of like this is like why do we have to be why do our faces have to be on the cover like we should have like a cool piece of art or something but these guys are thinking about being famous and making it and so he's like, I just, I want to do more with music. Like I want to do more producing and recording and I want it to be more about the music aspect versus the, we need a hit song to make it. And I'm just like, yeah, man. I mean, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I can tell you about my experience though. You know, I've, I've been doing this for a long time and like one of my, one of my good friends, like, well, actually Rebecca Jade from the interview a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. um, she said, you know, when you're saying yes to something, you're saying no to something else and vice versa. So basically when you're saying yes to something that maybe you're not, your heart is not really in, you're saying no to a possible better opportunity, you know? And so, um, it's true. I, it's just, that's kind of what pushed me over the edge where it's like, man, I don't know if my heart is fully into this. My heart is definitely into sharp shock, but I don't think it's fully into Sharp Shock. It's like 80% into Sharp Shock. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm like, I just feel like I'm saying no to other opportunities right now. And I, I think that's more important to me to open up another opportunity than take an opportunity away for this band. Yeah. It's pretty deep, man, but it is it what is it deep. is. It is what it is. It's like that kind of opened my eyes to I'll be fine. <laughs> I'll be fine. Yeah. I'll be fine. I'm working enough and playing enough and I have enough going on that it's fine. Even if they blow up to be the biggest band in the world, I just feel like it'll come with a cost and I don't really want to spend that. I don't want it to cost me the person I am. So I'm going to do me. Let's talk about John Blackwell. <laughs> John Blackwell is dope. That guy. Why don't we start with John Blackwell's? Why don't we start with John Blackwell's video? I think I need another beer. Though. All right, dude. Well, kind of sad to hear, man. Well, no, really sad to hear. John Blackwell passed away. He's too young, man. What he, he was only like forty-two years old. Way too young. Forty-three years old, and um, I knew him when he was young, but. Um, we should start by watching a video and like just chatting like that'll get us started. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, John was like a he was a dope drummer, man. He was a dope drummer, and um, I, I got a lot to say about him, but I'll we'll we'll watch the video first. But he was best known for playing for um, for Prince. Um, I think he played for a little while with Cameo too, which is like a rad gig to play to. And um, dude is dope. Dude was dope, man. He like he revolutionized a lot of stuff, um, and I think he he got overshadowed by a lot of the new drummers, a lot of especially a lot of the gospel chop drummers. But I think he paved the way for them. And so um, this is from his like his uh, instructional DVD. Um, it's called Technique Heroes and Influences, um, and this is from Modern Drum Festival in 2002. So this is John Blackwell from his instructional DVD. I bought this Ooh. DVD. I straight bought this DVD when it came out and I was so pumped on it. I watched it like every day. Nice. I was so up on John Blackwell, dude. And so, um, yeah, let's check this out, dude. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Signature hat. That hat, though. <laughs> I'm not down with the hat, dude. You know, I'm not down with the hat. That hat's <laughs> whack, bro. Did you have a feather in it? <laughs> I mean, that's cool. No, actually, I dig hats. I just, that's not my style. But that's his style, dude. That was his signature thing. It's very unique. You I'll don't tell see you. Anyone else wearing a hat like that? Oh unless, you're <laughs> unless you're a pimp. <laughs> or at yeah. church. <laughs> Bro, Tom Coster on keys. Tom Coster is dope fusion all day. Oh, this is produced by Paul Siegel? What? <laughs> Bro, that China though. Yeah, it was <laughs> Oh, Phil Fallow is on this? Here we are at Fair Track Studio in upstate what New York. What just happened? <laughs> uh, we're getting ready to do a drum project that I've been looking forward to for a very long, long time. All right, John. We're going to talk about... Look at that movie. get up though. We're going to talk about techniques that I use in my playing. And we're going to talk about some of my heroes, like Billy Cobham. Oh, I like Billy Cobham. Lionel Hampton, mm -hmm. Yogi Horton. And many, many others. They had to edit that out. Let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, that's too many German. <laughs> Governor. That groove, though, is heavy. What was that? Yeah, that's monitor. Turn him up. Uh oh. Hey, that's John Blackwell, though. He would do that. I liked it. It was like it added personality and color to him. Like he, he wasn't perfect, and, that, and I liked that. That fool had a pocket though for days. Tom Costner. Oh. <laughs> I saw Tom Coster play with Dennis Chambers, dude. Really? Yeah. And John Schofield. Woo! Well, it's dope, man. Like fusion all day. Uh-oh. Kick drum broke. <laughs> what? His pedal broke, dude. Poor John Blackwell on his instructional DVD at Modern Drummer Fest, dude. Quick swap, dude. Yeah. I love that, like, his setup, besides that China, that China's so whack, dude. But, like, <laughs> but his setup, though, like, his crash is all low. Yeah. And, like, I, I don't know, man. I really dig that. When I was younger, I, like, I thought it was, like, I never saw drummers play like that. Like, I was used to, like, 80s drummers that had their cymbals all high. Yeah, I like, I like my stuff pretty low. Me, too. I can get feeling to get to it quick. Except that he's just got that one symbol way up in space. Yeah. But it is very visually like striking. Yeah, yeah, it's and gotta it's gotta be John Blackwell. Right. It's very unique 
to like when you saw that, you know that was John Blackwell's kick. You know, like that's his setup. It was very much. It's like in Dugu Chancellor, like his symbols are like all like him. It's only his style. That's how this was. He had those five strokes down though. Huh? There you go, John Blackwell. Woo! <laughs> Ooh, dope. Gotta fix the hat. Yeah, yeah. What was that? <laughs> Uh-oh. Don't lose it, John Blackwell. Focus. <laughs> yeah, get rid of that thing, dude. Oh. Get rid of it. <laughs> it's business now. There you go, Tom Coster. Don't even worry about putting slacks on, bro. Sweatpants are fine. <laughs> Show up how you are to the gig, dude. <laughs> This is a drum festival, you know? No one cares about the keyboard player. <laughs> He's just like, you're lucky I even wear pants at all. Seriously? <laughs> like, I almost just came in my undies, dude. T-shirt and sweats, dude, <laughs> for warm-up pants. He's getting busy with that right hand, though. Six he did it backwards though, huh? Boom, boom, boom. Crossover on the floor time. That's weird. I like that stuff. I like that. That was dope. He's like so busy with his right hand. It sounds good though. Uh oh, he hit that China. <laughs> Another six stroke fill on. There he is. That's the John Blackwell we know and love. There it is. I still to this day do not know what he is doing. That is. I have no idea. I don't know what the fill is. I don't know what the twirl is. I have no idea. I can't even hear the fill. Yeah. Focused on what he's doing. I don't even know what his hands are. Yeah, dude. Crazy. Man, he's a very, like, visual drummer, man. He really, like, is entertaining to watch. Look at that. Nice. Uh-oh, it's go time. Have you seen that one? I forget which one. He's playing on uh, some late night show with Prince. It's like somewhat more recent. No. Sheila E's on it and stuff. Oh, that's oh cool. man. That is, yeah. He, I, he, I gotta see. Maybe we can watch that one too. Yeah. He <laughs> reached like, another level, man. I watched he, it. It was just like mind blowing how tight the band was. It was just like, when he was playing with Prince, he reached another level, dude, man. Dude, it was insane. Like, I can tell this wasn't too rehearsed. 
but it's still pretty tight, man. Especially at the time. That's a more more common twirl, but he has his other ones that are just like. Tony Williams kills. <laughs> Tony Williams kills. That's it for sure, Tony Williams kills. Yeah, that's good. Tony Williams kills. <laughs> Oh, John Blackwell. Oh, so that's what that China's for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, some Tony stuff. Yeah. Who doesn't do Tony stuff, though? I know, man. Seriously. <laughs> he does it well, though, man. Yeah. He put his twist on it. That was good, man. does sound like he sped up quite a bit, but it's cool, man. He gets a pass. <laughs> it was a good solo, man. It's like you're playing fusion. Yeah, he did. Listen to the guitar now, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Obi on guitar can keep up, bro. It's still, it's still killing though, man. That was dope, dude! That was tight! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! John Blackwell. That video was dope. That video was dope. It was super like, dope. It was, even though there was like, it was a little rough around the edges, it's not the cleanest like drumming, you know, but that's kind of one of the things that I loved about John Blackwell is it made me feel like, like it's attainable, you know, yeah. or achievable. Like he's he, human. He's was, human. That was yeah. a real live performance. It wasn't exactly. like some dude sitting in his house like right. pressing record a thousand times exactly. until you got the perfect take. And I, capturing 15 seconds. <laughs> yeah, I do that too. And you know what? I've had solos like that and I've had I've had gigs like that where I'm like I you know, it it wasn't what I really wanted, but it's really honest and like dude, he was killing. Like he oh, was slain, dude. Ripping. Yeah, really and so like that overshadowed the the small mistakes that were made. That's what I loved about John Blackwell. So let's watch another video and then let's get into like my stories about John Blackwell. Sounds good. All right. This, this is um, The Everlasting Now by Prince on The Tonight Show uh, with Jay Leno in 2002. There's some heaviness in this, dude. Sheila E is on this. Oh, yeah. Like, Prince, of course. So this is when and the horn this section is, is so tight. Yeah, dude. dude. So tight. This is like when John Blackwell was like really at his peak of like his career. Like he was 
killing, dude. Like I went on, I went to this, I went to a show at the Anaheim, um, the pond, and saw this on this tour. I saw really? Prince, and it was like mind blowing. Like, so you like like before we start this video, you like you want to talk about like the video that we just watched, where John Blackwell was a little rough around the edges, and there's mistakes and stuff. This was not happening on that tour. Like he was so polished and so like pro, and he did all of his his like show stuff, the twirls and the big china and all that stuff. But it was so polished and like on the top level of his game, dude. On the top level. So let's check this out. Let's get yeah, this video. Is well, my next guest, a music superstar, four Grammys and an Oscar. He'll be performing at the that Aladdin face, in Las though. Vegas this Sunday. Just Prince's <laughs> face, <laughs> dude. Tonight, we'll a song from his box set, One Night Alone. Please welcome Prince. <laughs> Got a sweet custom china stand. Dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah, purple drum. Imagine playing behind Prince, dude. No. And she Lee. <laughs> Love it. Look at how sharp they are, dude. No sweatpants on this no. thing. Everybody's wearing sleeves on this game, dude. <laughs> oh, they sound like robots or something. Yeah, yeah, dude. Playing that fly rhythm on the on his left hand. Yeah, dude. Man, I can't believe Prince is gone too, man. Uh, bro, look at that sax player, though. <laughs> that photo don't look funky at all, but he is. He's so funky, <laughs> Look at Sheila E. Getting down. I want to be in a band like this, dude. Yeah, that's her move. Woo! She's so sick. Oh, Come on with your Puerto Rican dude. self, girl. <laughs> that, 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 all that was so oh. tight, dude. Symbol. I don't care. Who cares? 
<laughs> Bro. <laughs> that was on fire right there. That's ridiculous. That was on fire. That whole band. Dude, seriously, man, I think like John Blackwell was the perfect drummer for that gig. That was that was his gig, man. Like Yeah. I, I, I mean there's a lot of other drummers that could handle that gig, but John Blackwell handled that gig like the best possible case scenario. I've actually had an anxiety dream about Prince. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like playing with Prince? Yeah, I got in a, I had a dream where I got called to sub a gig for Prince. Oh man. And I was just like freaking out. I was like I, I I don't know if I can I don't know if I can play like oh. that I don't know if I can be that I've I've had dreams about can, it I don't know if I can handle that spot on stage oh, I would, dude. in a minute I would be all about it yeah yeah but you know <laughs> what I mean like inside yeah. your head like mm -hmm. of course I'd be like yes yes I'll do that I'll Man. go for it let's let's do it. <laughs> All the shenanigans, though, that, yeah, I, well, I would be the same way. But I mean, man, could you, man, I, I would be so stressed out. That like, confidently, that, that that's yeah. what it was, though. Like, even, you know, like, I mean, in a, an arena, he was that confident. Like, where it was yeah. like, I love that. Like, that Prince allowed him to be him with his big old china from behind and all his stick twirls. He would do stick twirls so ridiculous. Like, when I saw them in concert... It was it was so over the top, but it was so John Blackwell, you know. And it's like that's why he's great for that gig, man. Because it was it was only him. It was only him that could yeah. that could do that. And he 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 had the pocket for that gig. He had the showmanship for that gig. Same thing with Cameo. He had the pocket. He had the showmanship. He had the style, you know. And he killed it, man. He killed it. Like, you know, it's like it's it's sad to think that we're in that part of the music industry where Prince is gone, John Blackwell is gone, Michael's yeah. gone. You know, we still got Stevie Wonder. Thank goodness, man. Yeah. Thank goodness, man. Somebody needs to like protect him. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, but you know, on that level, there's very few dudes that like, or few bands that are like that live, man. Like, like Justin Timberlake, I think can bring it like that. Um, a few others, like maybe like D'Angelo or like... His band is tight. I mean, who else <laughs> is there, though? There's yeah. not really many others that bring it on that level like Prince did. Like, I mean, or like John Blackwell did. Like, this is this is my take on John Blackwell, man. Like, like I definitely had my mixed emotions about him as the years progressed with him. But like... I just feel like he was about chops and he was about flash and flare stuff, but he knew how to play a top level gig like a real dude. You know what I mean? Like a real dog that could play some play a top level gig. Like yeah. he John Blackwell had the new school approach, the real on top and real busy, the chops like the new approach of the gospel drummers, but he had the old school approach of like like Sugarfoot Moffat and like Ricky Lawson or uh, John Robinson. Like he had that old school approach too. Yeah. And so it was like a mix of both, and that's why I think he was great for Prince because he had that modern, fantastic like flash and flare and weird like a big old china and like you play this weird cross sticking like or not cross sticking but like weird pattern like left like he was like ambidextrous or i don't know but um <laughs> yeah dude he's a really he was a really unique drummer he was he was really you know um i, I mean i've i i knew I, when i was a kid man when i was probably like 20 21 or 22 like i knew him like that's crazy. Before John Blackwell was John Blackwell, when he was just the young kid, you know, uh, showing up at NAMM show. Like, I saw him kind of change the game at places for NAMM show or pave the way for drummers like Ron Bruner and Eric Moore and Tony or uh, Thomas Pridgen and... Tony Royster was already, like, the child prodigy, but still paved the way for that... Uh, I call it like the Nam show 
mentality or like NAMM show shenanigans. So what I mean by that is like showing up to a booth and going, oh man, what kind of drums are these? These are cool. Like y'all do artists? <laughs> like, and then like sitting down and going, ding, ding, ding. oh yeah, they sound good. And then start shedding a little bit. And then next thing you know, they're like fully going for blood and there's a crowd around their yeah. booth. Uh -huh. He, John Blackwell is the dude that like, I remember starting that whole thing. <laughs> like, and like drummers, like drummers would show up and do that kind of stuff. Like, I don't, I can't think of any offhand, but like drummers would show up and demo stuff, you know, but it wasn't like that where here's like, you know, like when I used to go to NAMM show when I was a kid, we'd go to booths and like see demos with like Dennis Chambers or, or, um, anybody like and Dugu Chancellor or mm -hmm. you know um, Harvey Mason drummers like that would be demoing stuff and they would be playing with a band you know like like I've seen like John Schofield or I saw whoops I've seen um like uh, Joe Zawinul or like you know bands like that like in like the Korg booth or like the uh -huh. PV booth yeah and that's where I've saw I've seen my favorite drummers like Steve Gadd or like you know whatever, but like John Blackwell wasn't a no he was a nobody. Those drummers were famous then. He was looking up to those drummers, and so I would. It got to where John Blackwell became famous at NAMM show because he would walk around from booth to booth and test out drums, <laughs> and just go for blood. And he was doing stuff that none of those guys were doing. He yeah. was he's twirling his sticks like in a way that nobody's ever seen before, you know? And, like, it wasn't the, like, rock, like, Tommy Lee twirling between your sticker, your fingers. It looked like he was twirling his stick around his hand and catching it perfectly and doing it both hands, like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, it's like, no one's seen that before. Is that what he's doing? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what, he's do what is he doing? I don't know. What's this guy doing? I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, dude, like... <laughs> And then like all the triple E fills and the Tony Williams fills, but he does the Tony Williams fills like so much more well. aggressive, aggressively. Yeah. And like just the pocket is like real on top. And it's just like, man, it's like no one was doing that then. And um, I I was so like blown away when I, the first time I saw him at NAMM, I was, I was walking around with my buddy and I was just like, who is this kid, man? Like he, we thought he was like our age. And it was like, I never heard Besides, like, Chris Dave, like, I never really heard drums played like that. Like, I never heard that approach. You know, I never heard that, like, that, that like, aggression. And it was, like, pure passion coming out on the drums. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't, like, skit. Like, this dude had, like, you could tell he has all the heart in the world. And he doesn't have all of the, the um, education or technique or whatever. I know he, he went through a lot of education and a lot of lessons and a lot of studying. But... That doesn't come across to me in his drumming. What comes across to me in his drumming is his heart and his like passion for his instrument. Mm -hmm. And um, he's found a way to like have his thing. And man, he just he just completely like set the place on fire every time he'd play. Every time he'd play at Nam, dude. When he, especially when he was younger, he would just set the place on fire. Like he would. I remember. I remember like he would always like have his eyes closed and he'd just be soloing and doing his usual thing. And then he would open his eyes and there'd be a crowd of people around him. And he'd be like, holy crap. Like, you know, like, whoa, like where did all you guys come from? <laughs> and he was just so in the zone that like, he just zoned out and didn't, he just shut off the whole outside world. And, you know, next thing you know, there's a crowd of people around him. And I mean, I've seen people come up like owners of like these drum companies and be like, hey, man, nice to meet you. You sound great. Like, what's your name? You know, and so anyways, like from seeing him, you know, crossing paths a lot at NAMM show and stuff, it's like we kind of we're, we're like we we're like on a friendly like, hey, what's up, man? Good to see you again. Well, one time I walked into um, Guitar Center in Escondido hmm. and he was there. He was like doing what he does at NAMM show, but he was doing it at Guitar Center. <laughs> and he was like soloing and like literally no joke, dude, the guy behind the counter was like, all right, man, that's enough. Like, and shut him down, told John Blackwell really? to stop playing. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry, man, I'm sorry. And he gives the sticks back. 
And uh, you could tell he was like, they're just like practicing or something. Yeah. And so I walk up and I'm like, yo, dude. I'm like, what's up, man? And then he's like, I was like, it was, I was probably like 22 or something. And he's just like, oh, what's up, man? Like total like homie hug, you know? And um, he's like, what are you doing out here? And I'm like, I live, I live in like, I was living in Marietta or whatever, like, you know, 30 minutes away. And I go, what are you doing here? And he's like, oh, I live here in Vista. And I'm like, you do? And I'm like, man, I've been like, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I don't remember what I said. But I was, we were just like, we immediately hit it off. Like, I go, man, I've, I've wanted to like hang with you and like maybe I can take some lessons or something from you. And he's like, oh man, I don't know about that. He's like, maybe I could take some lessons from you. But like, he's like, I wouldn't have anything to show you. I'm like, what? Like, you know, it's just like, he was really humble, man. He was really that's cool, a, really cool. like laid back and just an amazing drummer. And so, um, I will say, dude, that like, and I'm not going to get like negative on him, but he did, he did change a little bit when he got the Prince gig. Um, mm. we, we would constantly like say hello. And every time we'd cross paths at Nam, like he would go out of his way to be like, like he'd be talking to somebody and then he would like grab my arm or something and be like, what's up, man. I'd be like, Oh, what's up, dude. You know, like, and, uh, it was cool. And then when things started picking up in his career, things started changing a little bit. Mm. And, um, so that, that, I mean, and I don't know, maybe he had his own issues. I don't know, but Hmm. Um, I know he went through a lot with losing his daughter and, you know, who knows, man, you don't know what people's personal stories are, but it's true. Um, I never really took it personal. I just was kind of like, man, I tried to learn from that. Like, you know, if I ever get like famous in my world, in the drum world or whatever, like, man, I, I just still want to be cool with everybody. I was cool with, I still want to say hi to people and give people the attention they deserve. And I don't mean that in a negative way toward him. I just was kind of like, I get it. You know, you're playing with one of the biggest artists of all time and one of the greatest artists of all time. Um, and maybe you just are busy or maybe you just got, you know, something else on your mind, but like, you know, it just changed a lot when he, when he got this, this, the, that gig, um, it, suddenly it wasn't like we were cool anymore. <laughs> uh. And, uh, I would see him and I would always say, Hey man, what's up, man? You sound great or whatever. And it was just kind of like, thanks. Thank you. You know, but that's it. Maybe for God, I don't know. Hmm. So, um, but you know, it's not about that. It's not about, you know, it's not about, it's not about that. You don't have to, you don't have to do that. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't demand anybody to acknowledge me or anything like that. I just, uh, I have a lot of respect for him and his, and his drumming and what he did. I feel like, well, I'll say this, man. When things started changing for him, like when, when he started getting, when he got the more serious gigs, I mean, he started off where, like, I read something when he passed away that, like, Bill Ray, who was a, a local drummer here in, in San Diego, um, a great drummer, but Prince, or uh, John Blackwell couldn't get a gig and he was going to get a job at Toys R Us. What? And Bill was like, what do you mean you're going to get a job at Toys R Us? And he's like, yeah, well, I, you know, he's like, you need to be gigging, man. You have all the talent in the world. And he's like, well, I don't have any drums. And so Bill Ray gave him a drum set and said, just use it as long as you want, but get out there and play gigs. Forget Toys R Us, dude. What? And um, he's like, just use these as long as you want. Give them back when you're done. And so he played gigs, played gigs, and then he eventually got the Prince gig. And before he was about to leave on tour, Bill said that he came back and gave him his drums. And they were severely used. He said all the heads were completely used. But he, gave, he them back. gave them back and he used them. And look at where he got. You know, he got a gig with Prince. If Bill Ray did it's not give good. him those drums, yeah, he would be, not have gotten that. He'd be manager at Toys R Us. Exactly. Exactly. One of the best drummers Wearing in the world, dude. One of the most... <laughs> One of the most well-known drummers in the world, though, dude, working at Toys uh, R Us. That's man. insane. And so, I did see, <laughs> like, man, like, I started seeing where he paved the way for these guys, these younger guys. And then I started seeing like those guys doing what he did. I started seeing Eric Moore come around, and mm -hmm. now Eric Moore is known for twirling sticks and 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 chops. But he took what John Blackwell did to another level. You know, and I saw these kids that were much younger than John Blackwell, like like 
Ron Bruner and Thomas Bridgen, who were already great when John Blackwell was coming along. But I feel like John Blackwell paved the way for those guys. Even though those guys probably, I don't know what their respect level is for John Blackwell, but the whole shed session thing, and I know everybody's been doing that for years. I know, I know, I know. But the whole going to NAMM show and sit behind a kit that you're quote unquote testing and go for blood on it. You know, that stuff didn't used to happen until I feel like John Blackwell started making that a thing. Huh. And, uh, I mean, and, and then I've, I've seen those dudes like shed with John Blackwell and really like go for blood on him. And, you know, it's like, I, I just felt like that was disappointing for him, you know, because, he, they should have more respect for that dude, man. He, like, he's, I don't know. He he made it so that they could do what they do, you know? And, like, I feel like they were trying to outdo him, mm. you know, on a lot of yeah. stuff. And so, you know, that's, that's it's just weird. But anyways, as his career progressed, man, like, a few years ago, I saw him, I think maybe two years ago, I saw him at the Tama. It was, like, the Tama anniversary party. And like animals as leaders played, so Matt Garska was playing, and um, Ron Bruner was playing. Like they did like solo stuff. Stuart Copeland was there, what? like super crazy gnarly like event. And so after the concerts, like a- after animals as leaders and all these other bands, I think um, what's his name from Dream Theater played, and I forget his name, but anyways, I'm probably gonna get a lot of Portnoy, heat for the Portno- Mike Portnoy, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, he was playing. Um, anyways, after the bands played, they had like drummers on like drum risers set up in the audience, and then like spotlights would go on. Everybody's probably seen the videos, but so like Ron Bruner plays, and there's like a spotlight right on him, and he just does this incredible solo, like just melting faces as fast as you can possibly be, <laughs> and uh, just super like super cocky too, a super cocky solo. And then, like, another dude plays, and I don't remember who, and then, like, a rock guy plays, and his solo was great. Everybody's solos was just killing. And then the spotlight comes on John Blackwell, and he does his thing. And honestly, man, I'm, like, I'm being 100% honest. It was not good, dude. It was not good. Really? He dropped his stick, like, two or three times. No. And didn't, like drop it it's like he dropped it and picked it up and he did like the same old shenanigans like that he's always done since the 2002 video it was the same like stick twirling china thing trying to play grooves it just wasn't happening there was something wrong there was something wrong and i couldn't figure it out i couldn't figure it out i was like i don't know this like i've seen john blackwell play and he's this is after the whole career with prince you know so I just, that's not him. Like, what's going on? You know, something's not right. He just, that was really terrible. Like, either he's not playing, he's not practicing, he's not playing, he's not gigging, he's nervous, something's up. But it wasn't, yeah, wasn't sick. him. Well, I think, I don't know, I don't know. But after, so the next day at NAM, he was at the Zildjian booth, or Sabian or something. I think it was Zildjian. And he was just sitting on, like, one of the risers, and he was talking to somebody, and it was like he was really down, man. He was just, like, head down, and they were in a deep conversation. I can only think now that he was like, something's wrong with me, and I don't know what it is, you know? Like, um, but I went up to him, and I said, hey, man, you know, like, I know we've, I've had those nights where it's like, this is my moment, and i blew it <laughs> yeah. you know and so I went up to him and I said hey man you sounded great last night man it was great seeing you play again and he was his mind was elsewhere dude he was just not even looking at me and he's just like thanks man thanks 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 and like and I was just like I left like going dude what is with this guy like here we go again like I go up and pay him a compliment you can't even look me in the eyes and say thank you and you know now I feel really bad because obviously something was up you know and then i think he found out later that he had a brain tumor and he his brain wasn't working that's why he couldn't play like he normally does Mm. that's my theory i don't know like i don't know his family i don't i don't know him any i didn't know him anymore um but it 
really made sense to me that that wasn't really him playing. That was like hit the sick version of him playing. So when I found out he passed away, I was very like bummed and sad and disappointed that we lost another great drummer. But yeah, but it made sense that that Tama thing, man, that that wasn't him. We shouldn't remember that version of him. You know, yeah. the two videos that we watched. That's John Blackwell. That dude could play his balls off. Yeah, he ripped. <laughs> yeah, dude. So man. John Blackwell and the family of John Blackwell, man. We lost a big legend, man. And he's a he was a great drummer and he did so much for our community, man, as a drummer. Like he did so much for like the gospel chop drumming community and I don't know if that's a thing. I don't know, you know, everybody acts like they're like bummed out when you say gospel chops, but that style of drumming is now a thing. You know, it's the chops or whatever you want to call it, the triplet fills, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, man he paved the way for that stuff in my opinion you know he helped pave the way for that stuff i know a lot of people probably have a, a bunch of different opinions about it but man he was he was a very unique drummer that's my take on it he's 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 a very unique drummer and um he deserves to be recognized as that big time yeah he's phenomenal and uh that's it man john blackwell was great man i paid money for that dvd now you can just download it. I bought that mug. Mm. <laughs> I watched it like every day on tour and like watched it every day when I got home. I watched it all the time. <laughs> I loved it. So that's it, man. That's this whole episode's dedicated to John Blackwell. And um, I think he deserves it. He was a great Absolutely. drummer. Absolutely. He's a great drummer. <laughs> Product review! Product review! <laughs> All right, this week we are reviewing the Ahead Armor Case. Symbol case! Or what is this? It's a symbol bag. Oh, yeah, symbol bag. The Ahead Armor Case (laughs) symbol bag by Revolution. It's a mouthful. The Ahead Armor Case by Revolution. Oh, sorry. Um, All right, so here we go. We got this little thing, wait, like, here you go, can you see it? All right, this is kind of a big, it's a big thing, man. It's like a big symbol bag that my cats have been laying on. But anyways, um, here's the thing. We got Adrian Young from No Doubt, we got Thomas Pridgen, Mike Johnston from Mike Johnston's Lessons, and Thomas Lang, and yeah. So this is about our, our ahead armor cases, I guess. Uh, it's got DynaZip zipping system. That's for the drums. I don't know. This doesn't have anything to do with the symbol case, I guess. Anyways, oh. um, this is fancy, man. This is fancy. So this is my second symbol bag that I've had by Ahead Armor Cases. Can I look through this thing? Of course you can. And then you can just tell me what, what um, it is. So that looks like a big old pouch. That looks like you can fit some gigantic hi hat symbols in Yeah. There. Or crash symbols. Yeah. It's do you cool. know how, it used big, to come, how big that is? Will that do 16s? Probably, yeah. 17s, 18s? It used to come with um a it used to come with a divider. It didn't this one didn't though. You getting cheap on me ahead, armor cases? <laughs> so let me tell you about ahead armor cases. So this is a head this is an ahead armor symbol bag. A head armor case symbol bag it's by revolution so revolution is a company that makes a bunch of other cool products like true tones true tones yes we'll have to review those later Mm -hmm. they make a stick silo they make the firefly drum key they make all the ahead armor cases they just license them to ahead so revolution is actually the real company uh it's revolutiondrum.com uh, as I said, this is my second symbol bag. I have the exact same one. I've had it for several years. I've taken it all over the world with me, not just in this country or not just to local gigs. It's been in and out of my car hundreds of times. It's been on airplanes lots of times, maybe not air, not hundreds of times. 
So I'm gonna tell you what I love about this bag. And then I'm gonna tell you a few things that I don't love about this bag. Look at the zipper. The oh, zippers that's are a heavy duty zipper. the best in the business. They're the best in the business. I don't think you'll find another symbol bag that has the stitching and the zippers or any bag that this company makes, you will not find another company that has the strong, durable zippers and stitching that this bag has. Um, believe me, I've looked, never found it. Um, this also has a thing on the back here. Turn this thing around. This has a thing on the back where, yes, you guessed it. Um, this comes out. Oh boy, backpack strap. There you go. Oh boy, there you go, there you go. And it turns into a backpack. So you can that is amazing. Ninja Turtle style. You can look like a straight up Ninja Turtle. Yes. These things hook on here. Um, that is so amazing for traveling, man. Like, it's not amazing when you have a bunch of symbols in there. It hurts your back, but it is amazing to carry around. So this is what I love about this bag. It turns into a backpack. It doesn't turn into a backpack. You can put those things away. Whoa, it's even got like. It's even got this to put around your big old beer tummy, belly. Tummy strap. Yep, you look like a straight up Ninja Turtle. Just in case you're jumping out of an airplane with your symbol. Yes, so you can paint it green and go to Comic Con if you want. <laughs> uh, okay, so, oh it does, oh check it out. It does have a hi-hat thing. Oh, it has dividers that are made thing. out of straight up wool. Really? Well, I don't know if it's wool, but they're very soft. Straight up wool. Straight up sheepskin. Dude. Um, is that then, what your bed condom is like? <laughs> no, I wish. <laughs> And then here's the inside one. It's, I mean, there's a lot of thought that went into this. That is fluffy business. Now, here's what I do. I hope here's you don't have rivets do. in your symbols. Yeah, that's fair. That and it comes apart. with a, a, a shoulder strap, too. Um, fluffy business. And it has DX core. I don't know what that is, but. Sounds really serious. So check it out. This is what I do, man. When I travel, I take these things out. What? And I put littler ones in here. I have thinner ones. And that's because I use this as a suitcase for my stage clothes. Oh, yeah, we talked about this. Yes. In the I same use that episode for my the bed condom, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> I put my stage shoes, I put my stage pants, my stage shirts. They all go in here with my symbols, and then that gets checked in on the plane, and I don't have to worry about it anymore. Dang, that's a nice bag, dude. I like it, man. I'm going to give this bag a 9 out of 10. Whoa. And I'll tell you why it's only a 9. Why? Because this is my second bag, and the first one wore out on the bottom here. My symbols went through. Yeah, I've had that ha happen on a bunch of symbol bags. Me too. Bags, yeah. Every symbol bag I've ever had to buy is because of that. Um, this is supposed to have like a protective plastic thing on the bottom, which it oh, does. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, but my symbols still went through. Dang. Now that could be my fault because I took this thing, the wool, the straight up wool you out. You took the straight up wool out. So maybe that's my fault, but they don't last forever. So, I mean, maybe I should give it a 9.5. Um, it's pretty serious. Mine wore out, I had to get another one, and I liked it so much that I bought the exact same one. So. What's the biggest symbol that'll take? I think it's a 24. 24? I think. I think so, yeah. That is a big bag. Yeah, I think it's a 24. I think he, I think uh, he told me that he designed it specifically to fit a 24. That's cool. So, yeah, man, it's a really good bag, dude. And it's like anything, anything a head armor case. Like I actually know the dude that designed all this stuff. I like, I'm, he's a close friend of mine, and all these bags that he designed, man, are designed like. A lot of time and effort went into not only the des the design, but also like the materials being used, the zippers being used, like everything that went into it is it top bad. notch, man. It's top notch. It's and serious. It's very. It's, it's like that's made out of a fire hose. Like the next <laughs> step that you go, the next step that you take is just getting a symbol case, man. And like, I don't like traveling with symbol cases, so. This symbol bag is the best case for me to, to travel. They make different ones too, like they make ones with wheels, they make ones without backpack straps. I like the backpack straps just because it fits my needs. So, oh wait, here we go. Yep, 24 and 15. 15s, won't do 16s? That looks like you can it fit can 16s. It can fit 16s. 
That could fit 16. Might kind of stress out the zipper, but... 24, though. You could fit your 24 in there if you want. Sweet. So, I don't know, dude. I like this cymbal bag. That looks awesome. Yeah. This is finally a product I can get behind. Maybe I'll get <laughs> one of those next after my current one has a blowout. Yeah, dude. Symbols everywhere. I've been damaging my symbols, man. Like every time I'm like tired from picking up my gig, my stuff after my gig, and I put it on the floor, and you hear that like, oh man, that hurts so bad. <laughs> oh, that hurts so bad. <sighs> I can't do that. So I'm like, I need to get a new symbol bag. I didn't even tell my wife. I just got it. And then it's been, the box has been on the couch for like a week and the cats have been laying on it. Nice. So Breaking it is what it is. I haven't used it yet. I've been using the old, the old feller. That is a nice symbol bag. Yes, sir. Way Stoked to go. On it. Revolution. Revolution ahead armor ahead, cases. Armor cases. Revolution. Bag. Wait a minute. Oh, bad. That's a lot of words though. You guys should consolidate. Yeah, I mean, I only do the revolution thing. Here we go. Check this out. It says it right there. Right there. Yeah, revolution ahead. Revolutiondrum.com. Armor um, case, symbol bag. Yes. Ahead armor case, symbol bag by revolution. That's a lot to, that's a lot. And maybe you get a nine and a half because of the name. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's a great symbol bag. You guys should get one for sure. Revolutiondrum.com, headarmorcase.com, bigbang.com if you want to sell it at your store. Man. What's up? It's been another week. Yeah. And I do have a soapbox this week. <laughs> <laughs> we always know that's going to happen. It's always going to be a soapbox. Let's get into it. Corey's soapbox. Corey's soapbox. trying to hear that right now what oh, happened man. all right phil well this isn't a big soapbox but it got me going enough i had to like walk away and just be like whatever bro <laughs> all right let me tell you about it let me break it down okay it's playing a gig it's a corporate party it's mellow corporate party it was like we we're outdoors and just it's a simple gig man it's just a simple easy gig it was a for a real estate company so i mean i'm not gonna diss on real estate people but it was a real estate company i'll just say that <laughs> so there are some characters at this place like i felt like one of these fools was gonna sell me something at any moment all right we finished the gig we already were dealing with one douchebag, dude. This one, sorry, this one guy, <laughs> this one guy comes up and he's just being, he's just obnoxious. I won't even get into it with this guy. Like, he's just like, well, what was your band called? Like, you know, and like, oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I love music. And I'm just like, whatever, bro. Just <laughs> stop talking to me. Stop talking to me. Mm. All right. At the end of the night, dude, this dude comes up, dude. He looks like. Men in Black, maybe meets Poindexter like a a black suit, a a a black skinny tie, white shirt. Like first of all, why are you at a corporate party looking like that? Like, dude, let your hair down. Except this fool didn't have hair, so Oof. relax a little bit, bro. You don't have to be Poindexter at this freaking corporate party, bro. Have a beer, eat a pizza. I don't know. Do what you do at real estate company corporate parties. This dude comes up to me. And the singer, and he goes, your band is so great, man. What are you guys called? And my friend's like, oh, we're called this. I'm not going to mention names. It rhymes with <laughs> the Schmauner Mitts. <laughs> okay, anyways. He's like, we're the Schmauner Mitts. And the guy's like, oh, yeah, your band is great. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's you guys just really brought the party. And you're, he's just a freaking dork. Just shut up. All right, so he comes up and he goes, we play Tainted Love. Tainted Love. What? Uh, no, no. Okay, whatever. So he's like, you know, now I got, I, I do have some, some critique for you. Talking directly to me. And he's like, now I'm not a musician and I know that's just not what musicians want to hear. They don't want to hear critique from somebody who's not a musician. So already I'm already mad. Like, I'm already mad. Like, yeah. first of all, if you're not a musician, shut your mouth. He's like, you know, the song actually goes, 
untainted love. Oh, uh, or uh, no, 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 wait, wait. How does the song go? Sometimes I feel I've got to run away. I've got to get away from the pain you drive into the heart of me. The love First of all, there's not even real drums on this. Or cymbals. Second of all, we didn't have a synthesizer. He wanted that part. The clock clock? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, so he comes up to me, finds the need to come up to me. <laughs> I hate this song now. I hate this song now. Okay. He comes up to me at the end of this gig and goes, you know, the song goes like this. And again, I'm not a musician. I'm just... I feel the need to, to critique you on something. Why would <laughs> like, you feel that need? Especially with me, Phil. Yeah, seriously. You don't have that with me. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> no. He's like, it goes, sometimes I feel like I should. Boom, boom. You have to hit it really hard. My <laughs> you have to hit it really hard, he says to me. You have to make people mad that it's so loud. You know, you have to hit it really hard. My and I'm looking, I'm just looking at this guy like, like, okay, cool. Yeah. So you went to music school. You know what it is. Like, uh, you know, I, okay, he's mad. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, and then, <laughs> and then. And then, and then what? <laughs> it gets worse. He says that to me, so I'm already like, "Oh, dude, no, no, that's it." Then he goes, "But hey, man, I love your hair." Oh, <laughs> what? I love your hair, dude. dude. <laughs> I'm just gonna hit the button because that <laughs> pissed me off so much. Ah! Dude, <laughs> that's amazing. I love your hair. But I love your hair. Dude, you need to hit it harder. But dude, I love your hair, man. It's awesome. <laughs> I was so mad, dude. Like, I feel like I didn't I've got to tell you how to play music. I'm not a musician, but <laughs> I love your hair. Bro. I'm not like, hey, you know, I know you sell houses and like, I know I just play drums, but bro, like, if you really want to sell houses, you should do it like this. And by the way, I love your men in black suit, bro. Later. Sweet skinny tie. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, homie, no. You freaking cross the line, dude. You don't uh -oh. do that. I don't do that to you. You don't do that to me. And so he's like, I love your hair. And I just like walked away. Didn't say thank you. Didn't go, huh? I was like, and just walked away. And then I came back and my friend Jeff already knew, man. He was just like, so you don't boss. even have to say anything. You don't even have to say anything. And I just go, no, dude. I just, I got on my soapbox right then and there. I didn't have the button, but I wanted to get on You're it. Like, I was just pushing things. Where's my button? I was pushing things, dude. <laughs> I just was looking for buttons to push, dude. And, like, I'm like, I don't, you don't tell me what to do if you're not a musician. If you're going to critique me, go to freaking music school and then come talk to me. Go to School of Rock, fool. I'll give you lessons. <laughs> come to Drum Brigade, fool. I'll give you lessons. <laughs> but don't come up to me when you're Mr. Freaking Joe Real Estate and you're going to critique the musicians by leading off with, I'm not a musician, and I know musicians don't like to be told what to do, but <laughs> then you're going to end it by saying, I love your hair? Yeah. Bro. Bro. I was like, I don't grow my hair for you. I don't have this haircut for you. I don't have my haircut. I don't play drums for you. I don't do any of that for you, dude. You're a nobody. You're a freaking dude in a suit that sells real estate. Go do that and leave me the freaking heck alone. Yeah. That's been my soapbox. I ain't trying to hear that right now. Burn. <laughs> Wasn't that big of a doozy nah, this week. That was pretty that was pretty to the point. Yeah. But yeah, seriously, you don't go 
to his office and be like, actually, you sh- you're selling your house is all wrong, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, let me type that for you real quick. Like, let me show you yeah. how to type it. It needs to, you need to hit the space bar harder, dude. Yeah, no, you, yeah, you, sh- you need to put two spaces there and like. Yeah. Like, I like what you're doing here. I like what you're doing, like, dear homeowner or future homeowner. But, like, you just need to hit that comma, like, hard, bro. <laughs> and by the way, dude, I love what you did with the place. Yeah. <laughs> this is a, a great rug. Yeah. Love it. Really good rug. Yeah, yeah. No. Don't talk about my hair, bro. Like, I like people. Like, I like I like when people are like, like, one of my students today was like, man, you have, like, you're, you're, like I always wear a hat almost every day. But dude, like, I know I got a crazy whatever, man. Like, I don't grow it for that dude though. I don't. I didn't grow my hair like this or cut it like this so that dude can give me a compliment. You don't know anything about me. You do have really cool hair though. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. Thank you. Thank you. That's it, man. It, it's just. It's just. There's always something, dude. It's just whatever, man. Just go be. Go be you, and I'll be me. But don't. I don't critique you. I didn't get on you until right now about wearing a suit to a company party, mm-hmm. <laughs> selling stuff all the time. So you don't do that to me. I ain't trying to hear that right now. Drum games! Drum games! <laughs> this week. What is it, man? It's another name that groove. Name that groove. Name what that is the groove? groove? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? I mean, I think it's a good groove. <sighs> Me too. It's pro- It's a great groove, actually. It's, it's an awesome groove. That was amazing! <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing! Yes. Yes. <laughs> Drum I mean, games. Drum games are fun. That was the best groove I've ever heard in my life. Dang. <laughs> Maybe not the best, but it was a strong groove. It was a strong groove. <laughs> and if you guess what that groove is, you know what happens. You win something. You win something. I don't know what, but it's going to be good. It's a surprise. <laughs> You're going to love it, though. It's going to be good. You're going to win something. Just saying. I mean, it could be something great. You don't know. But you're going to win if you name that groove, Mm -hmm. use the contact form on drumbrigade.com, or email thedrumbrigade at gmail.com and win yourself something. It's something good. Oh, yeah. You'll see. Win something good. Uh. Yeah. (laughs) You can win and you can name that groove. <laughs> <laughs> and when you do, something good. you're going to win something good. I love Shaka Khan. Me too. You know I played with her, right? No. No, I didn't. <laughs> but I know a dude that says that every time you say Shaka Khan, he's like, you know I played with her, right? And I'm like, you know I don't care, right? <laughs> Did he actually play with her? That's another soapbox, Phil. Uh-oh. It's another soapbox. <laughs> It's another soapbox. <laughs> I'll get into it briefly with you. Let's do a brief re soapbox. Re another. Re- it's a it's a short one. Okay. Bruh. I ain't trying to hear that right now. I know a musician. We're not going to mention names. Definitely not going to mention names because I'm not into blatantly offending people. Especially on my soapbox segment. Okay. Even though I've been known to do this, this dude is notorious for this. Like you know, I've played with her. He's the, the, the he's the Nam Show guy. Like, hey man, what's up, dude? How you doing? How's, how's it been going, man? I, I I haven't seen you in a while. How you how you been? Man, I've been busy. He's that guy. I've been so busy, man. I've been so busy, man. I just got back from wherever. Okay, whatever, dude. Okay, okay, good. Good for you. Happy for you. Proud of you. Okay? <laughs> um, Shaka Khan. Now, I actually know musicians that actually do play with Shaka Khan. They play with my dad. 
and like they I've played gigs with them. Um, there's also I know musicians that say they've played with Shaka Khan when they've been doing like some like they've it's like this they'll do like a gig with some smooth jazz artist. <laughs> Let's talk about smooth jazz. Let's talk about smooth jazz for a minute. I didn't know this was going to de- derail, dude, into gone. like... I only had one soapbox tonight, but... Now we got three. I mean, smooth jazz is going to have to be a whole nother soapbox because this is like as serious to me as the grumpy sound man. I hate, hate... I'm using the word hate. I'm using the word hate here. That's pretty extreme. I hate smooth jazz. I hate smooth jazz, dude. Okay. That's all I'm going to say about it. I hate it because I'm going to go off on a tangent. I'm going to have to hit the button like 15 more times. I know exactly how you feel. Good. Good. (laughs) Good. I hate smooth jazz. Stop calling it jazz. It's not jazz. You play watered down garbage. That's what you play. You're not a jazz musician. Stop saying that. Stop saying that. I hate smooth jazz. Stop saying that. Mm. Go play your music in an elevator and shut up about jazz. Okay? (laughs) Moving on. I know musicians that go... (laughs) (laughs) That was like the, the closest thing to like genuine rage I've seen come out of you. Yeah. That was like... Yeah. Uh, I know musicians that go, like, have been playing on some, like, smooth jazz, like, festival or something. And then Shaka Khan's in the house, and she comes up and sits in with the band, and then those musicians go, you know, I played with Shaka Khan, meaning, yeah, I played with her because she sat in with my band, but you're not, you don't, you're, you're, you're not smooth, you're not... Shaka Khan's musician. I'm not even going to say what musician it is. So I've had other musicians that actually do play with Shaka Khan and go, well, her name is on my checks, so I literally do play with Shaka Khan. She's not sitting in with, like, some other band that I'm playing with. There's a difference. Oh, yeah. Okay? So that's my thing about Shaka Khan. But I, this, this, like, these musicians, like... They'll pull shenanigans like I've seen like like Instagram posts or Facebook posts where like one in particular that comes to mind is like a selfie with like like Tower of Power. And so this person went to see Tower of Power and is a fan of Tower of Power like I am, like you are, but posted great gig, great hang. So if you don't know any better, you would assume that this person just played with Tower Power because yeah, he said great gig, gig, great hang. Like, not like hashtag selfie, oh man, got to take a picture with one of my favorite bands. Great gig, great hang. So come to the conclusion, whatever conclusion you will, from great gig, great hang. I mean, I may or may not have played with him. That's what you might as well have written in your post because that's what people think. I may or may not have played with... with Tower power tonight based on my post. Mm. That doesn't bode well with me. That's fake. Stop faking that funk, bro. Yeah, no, sir. Yeah. Your name is on the check, then you're playing with them. Mm-hmm. Or her, her name or their name is on your check, then you're playing with them. They sit in with your band, you're not playing with them. They sat in with your band. Post that. Man, what an incredible privilege. Shaka Khan sat in with my band today. But I've played with her? No, you didn't. That's my second soapbox. I ain't trying to hear that right now. <laughs> like smooth jazz. <laughs> It'd be like soprano saxophones all over it. It'd be like, oh god. Like pajamas with soprano saxophones. I can't. Print. I can't. I almost pushed the button again for Not soprano say, I mean, sax. Come on, Wayne Shorter. He kills that thing. I don't care. I can't handle. I can't. You hate soprano I can't, sax. I hate it. I hate it. Really? I hate it. I hate it. I can't do it.
Mm. Can't do it. I'm not going to get into it anymore because I'm going to push the button 20 times. And I don't, I just, I've gotten past my soapbox this week. I'm okay now. <laughs> but then I got amped up about smooth jazz again. And, you know, <laughs> I freaking hate smooth jazz, dude. I hate it. Okay. I'm sorry if you play smooth jazz and you made a career out of playing that music. That's fine, dude. You like making a career out of being freaking vanilla, then go for it. But <laughs> there's dudes that can play too. There's dudes that can play that play that music. Yeah. But I just, I just, I have standards, dude. Like, and dignity, and I will not lower myself to play that garbage. It's garbage. Brutal. It's garbage. Stop calling it jazz. It's not jazz. It's not jazz. <laughs> it's gonna be a good so far. Jeez, it's good. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> oh man, got me. This, this oh, is why man. I need a segment called we'll soapbox, man. We'll do that one <laughs> soon. <laughs> it's gonna be good. Oh, Woo. that's been one that's been brewing. I've been saving that fierceness in there. I've about been, that I've been one. saving that, that one for a long time. That's been episode four. It's been good, oh, that's, man. That's it, huh? Yeah. Whew. Episode four, man. It was good. It was uh it was great. It was fantastic. It was John Blackwell. Mm-hmm. It was stick twirling. It I was can't do stick twirls. Me either, man. It's I always drop my sticks. I do it for fun. I don't fun. know how to do those. Like I do, like I do the one that you made fun of. Yeah, I that's do that like one. That's like the only one I can do, and I I don't even do that one. Yeah. I do that when I'm like teaching lessons as a joke me too me too i do it every time i play a rock song or like throw sticks in the air yeah I i've been do doing that. this thing where i like hold a stick i put a stick on my palm and i try to like balance it while i'm playing it's like <laughs> 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 that's like yeah that's like that's my <laughs> show john blackwell show. doing that yeah yeah he's like <laughs> <laughs> and yeah yeah with the, the thing behind him yeah um so man, John Blackwell, you're gonna be missed. Big um, time. You're gonna be what missed. An inspiration. Prince, you're gonna be missed. Um, and uh, you know, it's been real, dude. It's yeah. been real. Cheers. Cheers, man. Drum brigade. 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 Drum brigade.